a lot of times you got to understand your role. Everybody can't be the chief. Everybody can't be CEO. Right. But everyone is important. But a lot of times we all want to occupy the same space. And that's right. where the disagreements come from. I, I really believe you can only be a great leader if you understood how to be a great follower first and foremost. Right. right? And, and that's extremely important. And, you know, candle ain't never lost nothing by lighting another candle. Right. That's you a know, fact. And actually, the moment that they hit together, it gets brighter. If you right. Pay attention to it. So when we really bring our minds together and start and start uplifting one another, lifting as we climb, so to speak, and really doing that, yeah. but then understand the roles, going through everything, the ups and downs of life, the, the most important thing I think I've learned is to work my strengths and partner with my weaknesses. Yeah. A lot of times it's hard for us to look in the mirror and say what our weaknesses are. Right. So we don't know ourselves. Mm-hmm. So it's hard to do anything or help someone else get to where they want to be if you can't help yourself first. Dynasty Point Podcast. More than the pod, it's a lifestyle. Yo, yo, yo. Welcome to the Highest Point Podcast. This is a podcast for everyone, no matter where you're from, no matter what you've been through, you know you deserve the best and willing to put in the work for progress to reach the highest point. Now, speaking about reaching the highest point, ladies and gentlemen, we have a very, very special guest in the building. I'm talking about a veteran television producer. You know what I'm saying? He's the entertainment industry executive. You done seen shows of his on BET. You know, you done seen shows on Fox. So that's just to name a couple places. You done seen him working with stars, major stars in the industry, such as Sean P. Diddy Combs, Kevin Hart, Vivica A. Fox, Monica, Keisha Cole. And hey, the list keeps going, but I'm going to stop right there. And also, this man is a pillar of the community. He's also the black voice amplifier i'm really proud to say that we have mr james dubose in the building thank you so much for joining us thanks for having me how you doing man man i'm doing great doing great uh first off i want to say that i i really appreciate all the things that you're doing because representation is so 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 important you know what i'm saying like seeing people that are successful that look like you seeing people that look like you on television can be so inspiring to the youth and all ages so I wanted to ask you, what is it that make you so unapologetically continue to create spaces for black entertainment? You know, I always say, you know, first of all, I love us. Man. I love everything about the culture, right? Um, <clears throat> and there's not a lot of places where you can really go and speak your truth the way it's supposed to be without it being watered down or or somebody judging you for it and so forth. It's always been uh, a dream of mine to be able to provide a platform where right. our voices can really be heard in this unapologetically authentic way, right? Yeah. And so that that's really that's really where the passion comes from. I feel like I'm walking in my purpose when I'm doing that. Not seeing those particular heroes that looked like you when you were when we was real young, you know, sometimes you don't feel like it it didn't exist. But now when we see these platforms where we are seeing us, it's like it just might like, yo, I can do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I can do that, too, because I done seen this brother that grew up in the same type of neighborhood I did, you know, doing it at a high level. So uh, I think that's very, very vital um, for the success and uh, the culture, period. Um, can you tell us a little bit about this network that you're building now? Yeah, man. So, uh, you know, In the Black Network launches October the 2nd. Mm. It's really a, a continuation, if you will, to a degree of what, what we started at Fox Soul. Ah. You know, what what I didn't have an opportunity to really express a lot of times was in the beginning when we first started Fox Soul, the goal was to make it at least majority black owned, if mm. not majority black owned. Right. Um but things change and you know corporations have uh things they want to do for their business that's gonna protect their business, so right. forth. And so when things started to change at Fox Soul, it was just the perfect opportunity for me to really um, fulfill a dream. And mm-hmm. so I felt like everything I wanted to to do, I'm just going to do it on my own now. Yeah. And, 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 and sort of make it happen. And so, I, you know, our tag like is in the black is black culture, black owned and, and profitable. But I want with this network, I wanted to bring back that feeling. Mm-hmm. And that when people say, well, what's the feeling? It's the feeling you get when you know you're in the presence of black excellence and greatness. You don't yeah. have to explain that. Right. Um, and so everything you watch and everything that represents in the black network, it's going to give you that feeling. 
Yeah, yeah, for sure. I definitely sense that when I'm looking at it and um, I'm getting excited about some of the launches because I've seen some posts. I'm like, yo, that's some people I want to hear from. And uh, one thing about our culture is multifaceted. But when you look in general in these spaces in the entertainment industry, they generally only really push certain things. Like they'll push us being ratchet, right? They put the money behind those shows. They'll put the money behind shows where, you know, being gangsters and killing and pushing drugs. But really, in, in reality, that's not the majority of black people. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right, that's right. the minority. You don't see a lot of people pushing <clears throat> trailer park trash, white people being trailer park trash. You don't see a lot of movies like that. You know what I'm saying? That representation, and uh, it can really change the perception of the general public because that's what they see so much in TV. Right. So right. what you're doing can be a total difference. You know what I'm saying? Like seeing more different things, you know what I'm saying? Like, because we're so multifaceted. Um, do you have any type of uh, ideas or what you want to bring forward to that platform? What type of shows and things like yeah, that? Man. Yeah, man. You got to show the totality of the culture. You know, like you just said, like they, the majority of the major networks, if you will, or the major media outlets, they only show one side of us. Right. Um, but we're much more than that. Yes. And, and quite honestly, the side that they show us even that's a positive if you if you understand it because mm-hmm. they only show the part of when you end the struggle. Right. They don't show us on the other side of that struggle. Right. And and that is the beauty of our people. We're very resilient people, right? So we, we want to bring content that speaks to that. We want to be entertainingly inspiring. Yes. And we want to show the resiliency of who we are because that's what not only entertains us, but it educates us as well, right? And it inspires us. You see some of the big shows that's on right now, um, 50 is doing it really well with BMF, the Power Series, everything he's doing. Yeah, uh, Easter Ray's a lot of people doing a lot of great things, right? Yeah. But we look at it as our culture still goes back and watches Godfather and the Scarfaces and things yeah. of that nature. And if you ain't come from that world, it ain't really about that world. It's, 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 it's the values of family and loyalty and things mm. of that nature. But they don't think our minds a lot of times – they don't show us in that. And we think the same way. Right. You know what I mean? Um, so that that's really what everything that we stand for is it's really valuing our minds. Yes. Um, it's, it's understanding the beauty, you know, what I call a beautiful mind. Right. That we we have that in our culture. Yeah. We don't get the opportunity. We see that from a few people mm-hmm. that they show, you know, the, the names that we all talk about. Mm-hmm. But even outside of those names, there's a lot of there's a there's a lot of beautiful things that goes on in the culture. And I want to have an opportunity to allow others to really present that yeah. um, in a real way. What I call the machine behind the machine. Yeah. All these big stars that you see, there's a lot of people behind the scenes with those minds is creating all the things that's happening. Right, you don't get an opportunity to see those people. Yeah, absolutely, I understand. So, um, how do you think we can maybe help support change in the narrative? And do you? Do you think that's something that's going to be uh, attainable within our lifetime? Ownership. Mm. That's really the bottom line because you can't go in somebody else's house and tell them how you want to run. Ooh. So you got to get your own house. And when right. You get your own house. You can do what you want to do. Yeah. Um, and, and we have to think about ownership and stop always saying mother may I or, or father may I, if you will, um, expecting people to care about us the way we care about us. Right. right. It's transactional for the most part for them. It's right. emotional for us. Right. And so until you own the platform that you want to be on, until you own your music, you own your creative content and so forth, mm-hmm. and you own the platform that you could put it on, they're going to control the narrative. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's true. Like, there's no way to get around that. I don't know how much real that can get. Um, and also... When it comes to it, we got to really stay together, too. Like, really come together. Because sometimes, like, I've I've been trying to, like, build in my community, you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. and uh, try to so, show support to others. And sometimes it's not reciprocated. But uh, one thing is, I think consistency will rule, you know. Just because you don't get that reciprocation immediately, don't stop what you're doing. You got to stay, you know, consistent for you. What do you think about that? Yeah, you, you know... I mean, consistency is everything. You ain't mm. going to go to the gym and do two hours and then think you're going to look like you want to look. you got to be every day consistent and be persistent in what you want to do. Right. And in terms of of us, again, it, a lot of times you got to understand your role. Mm. Right. Um, everybody can't be 
yeah. chief. Everybody can't be CEO. Right. But everyone is important. Right. And, and and when we start to really understand, no matter what your title is, you don't understand how important a person is until they're no longer there. Right? I don't That's care if a fact. janitor to whatever it is. Uh, everybody's just important. So, But a lot of times we all want to occupy the same space and that's right. where disagreements come from. Yeah. But but when you when you're a strong leader and and very well I, I really believe you can only be a great leader if you understood how to be a great follower first and foremost. Right. right? And and that's a, extremely important. And you know, a candle ain't never lost nothing by lighting another candle. Right. That's and, a fact. Know, and actually the moment that they hit together it gets brighter if you right. pay attention to it. So when we really bring our minds together and start and start uplifting one another, lifting as we climb, so to speak, and really doing that, yeah. but then understand the roles. Right. You know, uh, again, my, my, my going through everything, the ups and downs of life, the, the most important thing I think I've learned is to work my strengths and partner with my weaknesses. Yeah. A lot of times it's hard for us to look in the mirror and say what our weaknesses are. Right. So we don't know ourselves. Mm-hmm. So it's hard to do anything um, of significance, if you will, or help someone else get to where they want to be if you can't help yourself first. Yeah, you're right. You're right. We got to have a more of a collaborative spirit. Uh, someone got this title of CEO, boss, or whatever, but the best CEOs are working collaboratively with everyone Absolutely. on the floor. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I'm getting from what you're saying. And I think having that mindset is absolutely right. Um, now I want to go back a little bit, like, uh, kind of like in your, your history in this entertainment industry. I want to, how old do you think you were when you really got your, like, okay, your first lick, like, okay, this could maybe be like life changing. I'm going to stay on this path. This inspired me to keep doing what I'm doing. Right. I ain't, I'm not going to say it was a really lick or something that really happened. Mm-hmm. Like I was blessed to really early on know exactly what I wanted to do. Mm. Like I felt like God really instilled that in me, mm-hmm. um, either sports or entertainment. That's all I've ever done. It's mm-hmm. all I've ever wanted to do. Right. Um, I love being creative. And, and most importantly, though, I, I love challenges. I, I, mm. I love being, a, being an inspiration to people that not just what it may look like, certain successes that you may have, right? Right. Um, it's, it's, it's really understanding when you fall, how you get up, right? And, Absolutely. And, and there was no other way, uh, as, I, as, I, as I remember, that I could really show that, but through telling the stories of people that I felt like were very um, significant in the culture, right? Yeah, so yeah. If you look at my body of work, 95% of everyone I've had the pleasure and, and the blessings to work with mm-hmm. were at a crossroads in their life at that time. Mm. And the whole point from the Keisha Cole to Tiny to everyone was at a crossroads at that point. Michael Vick was just now coming out of prison at that time. Right. right. Um, and so the idea that I had an opportunity to speak to all of them was, let's not hide from that. Right, right. People, people are going to understand that more they're going to understand the struggle and you overcoming that than the successes that you may have. And if you yeah. speak your truth, people will respect that. So yeah. that's always been my philosophy is, is speak the truth. Um, when that moment of darkness, when you were supposed to give up and quit, what, 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 why did you? Right. Right. That's the starting point. I always try to start with all the creative things that I do. Yeah, absolutely. Now, um, one of the uh, root reasons why I was asking that question, cause you know, with yourself and also hearing all these amazing stories that inspire you, what is it that you feel like a lot of times these are the first generation successful people? You know what I'm saying? So this is their first time running into these type of situations. What do you think they can, um, when it comes to first generation success, how can we pass on that game to our kids? Because sometimes they're, they're, their struggle is going to be different than what ours were and how they're fueled it's going to be different because they're not seeing that type of struggle because we're first generation of success. So any type of advice you think you might can give to first generation successful people? Yeah. Watch more than you listen. Hmm. People speak well, but they don't necessarily actually in action doing what they're talking about. Right. Right. I could talk to somebody all day and try to give them knowledge that I've learned or, or wisdom over the years or, or the mistakes that I've made over the years and, and had to come back from. Right. But if you watch me, if you watch me get up and do what I do and let the results speak for itself. See, I, I'm a believer. I don't like to talk much. I've never really been a 
that right. much of a talker. Mm -hmm. But people like yourself that, and I'm honored that you think enough for me to have you on your platform, you've watched my work. Yes, sir. You've watched my my, my journey, so to speak, right? Mm -hmm. I, you ain't never talked to me in that sense. You don't really know the whole story, but you've watched me Absolutely. tell that story through my results. Right. And so I think when, when you can allow people to watch you, um, then they start to, to digest it with their own way. Mm -hmm. They may confuse your words. They may confuse... Because what works for you ain't necessarily going to work for that that next person or that next generation, right? Right, right. One thing that's going to work for everybody is consistency mm. and never quitting. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't really care what generation it is. It may go through a different struggle, right. but it's still going to be a struggle. You just yeah. got to keep going. Subscribe now for part two. The Highest Point Podcast. More than a pod, it's a lifestyle. lifestyle, lifestyle.